HTML forms. HTML forms are used uh, to pass information or data to a server or even end up in your email box. Uh, HTML forms have a front end and a back end and in this video I'm going to be covering the front end portion of the HTML forms. Uh, the front end is just creating the HTML and uh, having the visual appearance of the form. The back end is the server side where you use a code such as PHP or CGI which can then send this form to the destination of your choosing which can be just your web server or your email address or something like that. A form can contain input elements uh, such as fields, tech, tech, uh, check boxes, radio buttons, submit buttons, and, and many more. A form can also contain select lists, text areas, field sets, legends, and even label elements. The most important form element is definitely going to be the input element. Uh, an input element can vary in many ways. Uh, depending on the type of attribute that you use with that input element. Um, the input element can be a type of text field, a uh, checkbox, a password, radio button, submit button, and, uh, and more. So right now I'm in Notepad++ and I've opened up my template and I've went ahead and placed the title tag in here and I've just titled this uh, page forms and what I want you to do is just open up your body tag a little bit and the first thing we're going to create is the form tag itself and so I'm going to go ahead and put in the form tag and let's say we wanted to create a form that um, was like a contact form and we wanted to ask the person what their name is and so I'm just going to type in the word name here I'm going to go ahead and save this file and I'm going to run it in my browser. And as you can see, all that shows up is the text name. There's no box or anything after that. This is just your simple text. You can put a paragraph tag around it if you like, or you can just insert the text name. And it'll show up as is. After you put in the text that you want the user to see on your screen, uh, now you need to put in the input type. And so we're going to put in an input um, tag here with an attribute type and our type we want it to equal in this case uh, we want it to equal text and this is a text type and then after the text type we want to put in a name and in this case we're asking them for their name and so we're just going to put in name there. I'm going to go ahead and close this out and put a break tag after it. Uh, input tag is not a container tag. It is just a tag that uh, gives a couple of attributes here. Now the type is what determines what kind of input field it will be. In this case it's going to be a text input field. I'm going to show you a couple of different types in this video and um, possible choices could be a text uh, input type, a submit, maybe a password. Uh, the name is the is what you assign. You're going to assign a name to the given field so that you may reference it later. Uh, in this case, when you send this, let's say it goes to your email address, uh, this is not going to show up, uh, the word name that you placed here, because this is just in your HTML on your web page. So when it sends the information, you need to uh, tell yourself or whomever is looking at this information what this field represents. And in this case, it represents uh, an, our name or the user's name. So if I go ahead and save this and open up and refresh, now you can see I've got an input box here to where I can input my name. After our name, let's say we wanted to ask for some comments. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some text to let them know that we're asking for comments. And in this case, it's not going to be an input type because we don't want just one text line available. We want multiple lines available. What we really want is a text area available. And so that's going to be the tag that we're going to place here. Then we need to tell this text area how many rows 
we would like and so we're going to use the rows attribute and in our case we just want 10 rows and then we need to tell it how many columns we would like and we'll use the COLS, the columns attribute and we're going to go ahead and put in 30 and after the 30 let's go ahead and close that off with a closing angle bracket there and we're also going to close out our text area tag now actually let's put a break tag after this don't forget your break tags otherwise they're going to end up on the same line and in this particular instance we don't want them to I'm going to go ahead and save this file refresh in my browser and as you can see now we've got a comments area we also have the comment uh, text down here below and, and we don't really want that there so let's go ahead and go back to our HTML and after comments let's go ahead and insert a break tag in there as well and also let's say we wanted to let them know that that box is where we'd like them to place our comments so let's go ahead and inside the text area tag we're going to go ahead and put in some text and say place your comments here and we're going to save this file and I'm going to refresh and as you can see now the comment text is up on top and we've also got some text already pre-laid out in our box here that is telling the user to place their comments inside this box after this we want to give them a couple of options and uh, let's go ahead and put in some radio buttons here and so we're going to do a new input type but in this case it's going to be a radio type and uh, then we need to give it a name so that way we can know what this is later and this is just going to be, let's put in color we're going to ask them for a color and we'll put in a value which equals red in this case and we'll close that and we'll put red and a break tag after that. Now let me break this down for you uh, the input type here is this is going to be a radio button then we need to tell ourselves when we receive this data what the name of this section is and in this case we're asking them for a color now the value portion of this is when the radio button is checked um, we need to tell ourselves what they chose and in this case they chose red uh, the red text here is just so that way they can visually see red on the screen when they're uh, inputting this data so now let me go ahead and save this file and refresh and you can see now that they've got a red option here well usually when you have a radio button uh, you have a couple of different options there so I'm going to go ahead and type in one more time an input type and it's going to equal radio and we'll give it the same name so they, they know or we know that uh, this is a color and we'll give it a value and this time we'll give it a value of blue and then we'll tell the user that we're asking for blue let me go ahead and save this file again refresh and now they've got two different options they can choose red or blue they only get one choice here radio buttons only offer one choice you can only click on one at a time as you can see uh, so why don't we give them a couple more options let's say we wanted more colors in there um, but we didn't want to give them we want to allow them to choose more than one well in that case we might want to put in an input type that equals a checkbox and we're going to name this checkbox color again so that way we know that we're asking for colors and we're going to give this checkbox a value which is equal to let's say brown and then we're going to give the user, let the user know that they're clicking brown. Let's do a couple check boxes here. And we'll give it a name that equals color and this one let's say purple. and now that we've given a couple of check boxes let's go ahead and save our document refresh in the browser and now they can give us their name place their comments choose either red or blue and if they like brown and purple they can check on both of those as well 
Let's go ahead and drop down some lines here and um, after the check boxes, what if they wanted to um, give us a drop down menu so that they can choose another color but this time in a drop down menu. It's not going to be an input type. We need to use the select tag here and we want to give it a name and let's stick with colors here so we're going to go ahead and give it a name of color and then just like your lists where you put in the UL and then you had to use a list item well the select tag you need to give it an option and in this case we need to give our option a value as well so that way we know what value they chose and so we're going to say uh, green in this value and um, I'm going to go ahead and close that and type in green so they can see it and we also need to close out our option tag there as well. Let's open up a new option with a new value of, uh, let's go with pink and we'll let the user know that they're choosing pink. Very nice color. And let's give them one more option here. Value equals black. And we'll close out our option and then we need to close out our select tag as well. Let's go ahead and save this file, refresh it in the browser, and as you can see now they've got a drop down menu here and they can choose different items in that drop down menu. Let's go ahead and place a break tag after the select tag and um, let's say they needed to give us a password in order for us to give them their options here of their colors. Well, let's go ahead and let them know that we need their password from them. And then we're going to go ahead and put in an input type, which is going to equal, you probably guessed it, password. And we need to tell ourselves what they're putting in here also. And we're just going to abbreviate with a PDW there. And then we'll close that out and put another break tag after that. So if we go ahead and save this file, hit refresh, now we've got a password box, but since we've used the type of password, if I start typing here, you can see that the characters are not visible. Now, this password is not secured, so if I sent this, it could be found in the, you know, somebody is really trying to hack into your stuff and search your stuff. This is not an encrypted password. It, it just shows little dots as characters so that way people that are around you cannot see. So then last but not least, we need to add a submit button. So we're going to put in an input type again and uh, you can only guess what we're going to put in here. Submit and we need to put in a value and that value again will equal submit and then we'll close this out and we've pretty much completed our form. Let me go ahead and save this hit refresh and now that we've got a submit button there this is just the front end of the form uh, if I hit this submit button it won't do anything uh, because it doesn't have anything set up to do anything. It's got no PHP or CGI back end to it. Uh, like I said, it's just the front end, but just in case you have a hard time putting the PHP or the CGI together or finding a script that'll work, uh, I'm going to show you how you can send this information without that uh, CGI or PHP. It's not the preferred way to send this information, but it does work. And in order to do so, we're going to go up to our form tag up here. I'm going to open that up. And you're going to need to do this anyways, even if you did add a um, CGI or PHP uh, form or coding to this. So we need to put in the method that we're going to use with this form. And, and the method that we're going to use is we're going to post this form. And then we need to tell it the action that we're going to use. And normally inside the action, you would place uh, the location of your PHP file or your CGI file or whatever. But in this case, since we don't have any of those, we're going to use the mail to. And we're going to mail this to our dummy email address. And uh, now, if I go ahead and save this and hit refresh, 
I can fill out information here and um, let's leave that put let's say I want a couple of these and I want to choose black and I'm going to type in a password here and then I hit submit what it's doing let me drag this over here uh, I don't actually use Outlook uh, so I haven't set it up yet but it's trying to open my default um, email which in my case on my computer is Outlook is my default I don't use it like I said but let me close that out but if you anywhere you're at or anywhere your user is at and they're trying to fill out this form and they hit submit it's going to open up their default email and it's going to put all this information into their default email with your email address that you've placed in there into the to section of the email and so instead of just submitting this and having it instantly go to your email they have to do another step to where it will fill all this information out in their default email and then they can hit submit or send on their default email and it'll send to your email address so again it's not the preferred way but it does work and so that pretty much covers forms uh, in a very brief discussion here the next video is the fun part um, be prepared because we're going to take all the pieces of this puzzle put it together and create our very first HTML web page